Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today with some ice skating critters scene cards to share with you. These work for the holidays or any time of winter season, depending on what sentiments you choose to use with these fun designs. What I love about this is you can use lots of different critters to pair with these dies to create the scene cards. I originally was inspired to create these by mixing and matching different ice skating critters through the years from Lawn Fawn on one card design. I'm also going to be custom coloring all of my die cuts with Copic markers to match my Copic marker coloring on the critters as well as coloring the vellum, in this case the Lawn Fawn pearlescent vellum, with Copic markers to match my design. I'm a huge fan of when I am using Copic markers especially, but any color meeting, coloring medium, to make all of my elements match. In this case, the trees I'm using are die cut trees. So I colored, or I die cut them from white cardstock and colored them in with Copics so that everything really flows and mixes and matches really well. Another one of my favorite things about this particular card design is that I am mixing and matching components from many years of Lawn Fawn on two cards here today. I die cut this awesome new stitched pond from some smooth white cardstock and I kept my little pieces here to frame it up. I'm going to be layering those on in a bit. I'm also using them as a guide because I have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch pearlescent lawn fawn cardstock here that I am using for the ice skating pond. I'm using my Copic markers to add a little color. I'm using B000, B01, and B04 to add that color to the pearlescent vellum. It's still gonna have that awesome shimmer and shine, but it will have a little bit of hint of color to it, which again is going to coordinate and complement the Copic colored critters. I love the alcohol ink markers work so great on vellum. You're not gonna have to worry about them smearing off. We'll also use Copic markers to color the sky up above the mountain range in the background. The critters that inspired my cards are the brand new Mice on Ice, which are adorable ice skating mice. In fact, one of my cards is only going to feature the mice. And then the other sets I'm using are Berry Happy Holidays, the ice skating bear is from that, and Winter Penguin, which is several years old. That is our adorable penguin, of course, that ice skating. And I think it's so fun to mix and match all of these critters from throughout the years on a card design. Now once I have my little pond all colored in, I can go ahead and start assembling the rest of the components. In this case, that white that I'm using at the top, I actually need to die cut a couple more times. This is going to keep the amount of layers that I'm using down. So from that top piece, I am actually going to die cut a stitched mountain and I will also die cut a stitched simple wavy border. This is going to be the mountains in the background as well as the snow in front of it and then we will tuck and add in some tree elements from several different sets. In addition to that, from the stitched pond, I am actually going to die cut the stitching lines for the ice skaters. If you would rather stamp and emboss those, the Mice on Ice has coordinating stamp images that you could use instead. I opted to go ahead and die cut these and I want to do that before I actually adhere anything to my pearlescent vellum. So I used my stamps as a guide. I lined up all of my little stitching pieces. This one's going to be for the mice on ice but both cards were created the same. And then I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine and you can see those adorable little ice skating stitching lines. I love the ones with the heart. And I'm going to accentuate those again with my Copic markers. So we'll just take those same markers that we use to color in the pond and add a little bit of detail to really highlight, highlight this, the uh, ice skating. 
Now once I have that done, we are going to be ready for our Stitched Mountain, which this is a die that's been around for a while. It is not brand new. And then we're going to also use the Stitched Simple Wavy Borders, which are a more relatively new product. This, one of my, probably my most favorite thing about Lawn Fawn is the ability to mix and match products that have were released several years ago or throughout the entire time that Lawn Fawn has been around with current product. It extends the life of the products that we all own and love, which I think is fantastic. You can add a few new pieces to your collection every uh, season or release or whatever works for you, and you can mix and match, and I think that's just phenomenal. So here are my pieces. I'm not going to keep that top piece, but I am going to use it as a guide. So I'm going to hold on to it for a minute, and I'm going to take my dark markers and color in the sky. Remember as I'm doing this that I did do the same steps for both backgrounds. They are not exactly the same, uh, but they're very, very similar. I'm going to be changing up the where I'm putting my sentiment on the multiple critter card. It's going to be stamped and embossed on the pearlescent vellum. On this one, it's going to actually be stamped on the snow with fish tank ink. So just a couple of different options depending on what you're using, um, the size, height of your critters, that's really what determined where I place things, um, how I die cut everything, things like that. So you can see how I'm going to piece and inlay together the background now. So I've got my blue sky, I used some darker blue markers for that. I'm going to take some earth tones in E40 and E43 and color in my mountain range. I just wanted it to have a hint of color. You could also die cut this from colored cardstock if you want, as you could any of the components here. This makes it easy because I have a white panel and I am just simply repeating and using that white panel to add um, or to die cut all of the components. I'm using markers to color them in. Um, just a little E43, E44. We're going to be die cutting the snow caps from the pixie dust glitter white card stock to add to the top of that. Um, and then that's pretty much all the color for background components. I of course wanted some falling snow to go with my winter scene so we're going to take snowflakes from any of the stamp sets. These particular snowflakes are from Mice on Ice. We're going to stamp those with the Lawn Fawn embossing ink heat emboss with Lawn Fawn white embossing powder all over the top. I used the Mice on Ice snowflakes for this. For the three critter card, the snowflakes are going to come from Very Happy Holidays, Winter Penguin, and Mice on Ice. It just really depended. I mixed it up, just grabbed whatever snowflakes were available. There's lots of snowflakes in many different winter themed sets, which makes that awesome. I'm hiding my adhesive then behind areas where I'm actually attaching solid cardstock using some little dabs of glue behind the snowflakes for the top of the card. That's the only liquid adhesive I really used there. And then I'm hiding it in those corners behind the little white cardstock pieces that I'm using to, you know, make my pond and then of course the mountain range and the snow. So we're just going to hold that top piece in place with a little scrap of post-it tape. And then we're going to glue our mountain range down and piece in the rest of our little pond or the edge of the pond. This is going to build the background. I'm placing some acrylic blocks on top to help hold everything down until the glue is all dry. We're going to glue those snow caps in place. All the little finishing touches that really make a scene come to life. So now you can kind of see how I've laid out the rest of the components for my card. I wanted to use a house. I opted to use the new little like log cabin looking die cut house from the Shadow Box Mountain add-on. However, there's awesome little houses in the landscape stitched hillside backdrop and the portrait stitched hillside backdrop if you want to use one of those as well or maybe use multiples. I'm actually going to use the 
Pine Trees from the Portrait Stitched Hillside Backdrop and the Bear Trees from the Landscape Stitched Hillside Backdrop for my card. While I have nothing else on my card, I am going to stamp Sentiments from the Mice on Ice stamp set for, my, for the Mice card and then go ahead and glue that in place. I stamp that with Fish Tank Dye Ink that coordinates and complements the rest of my design. I put the sentiments up high for this one because the mice are relatively short and I had quite a bit of room to play there and I have a lot more ice skating figures on the mice card. There was more room on the vellum for the sentiment on the second card and the bear sticks up pretty high so I opted to stamp and emboss my sentiment for this, the all critter card down near the bottom and you'll see that in a minute. The trees are all colored in with E55 and E57. That includes the bare trees and the tree trunks of the pine trees, as well as the log cabin. Then the tops of the trees are going to be colored with G24 and G28. And I colored it all over with G24 and then just kind of feathered or flicked down the sides with G28. Um, even went back in with G24 as needed to give those trees some awesome texture. And I did a lot of these. I, I die cut only a few to start with, but as, as a lot of things that I create, um, I started playing with placement and I loved the look of the trees. I love the look of these little critters out in the, you know, snowy landscape ice skating and I just really felt there needed to be lots of trees and bare or lots of pine trees, lots of bare trees all around the scene, all around the little pond, um, just to fill it in and really make these scenes come to life. They're so simple, but one of my favorite parts of the card. Again, all of my die cuts were die cut from smooth white cardstock and colored in with Copic markers. I'm using a glass mat to do my coloring. This makes cleanup super easy. You can clean this up really fast with just a little um, stamp cleaner is actually what I used, but a little alcohol rubbing alcohol ink pad or you know wipe will clean that right off if you're using alcohol ink markers. I do recommend because you're using a glass mat and you can transfer color fairly easily, I've done that in the past, that you kind of clean up in between colors. You don't want reds transferring to a light area or anything like that. The windows were colored with Y08 and Y17. The red is R35 and R37, or R39, pardon me. And that's the little roof of the house to add a little pop of color. I didn't want to have my house be super wild color. It kind of has that log cabin look, so that's what I went for. The color on my cards, I want to come from our critters. They're all going to be having bright, colorful scarves. And so that's really where I want the focal point to be. And I just want this to be like the supporting cast here with trees and mountain range and uh, the little log cabin. There's my little rag that I have got some stamp cleaner on, and then we can start tucking components in. And this is really where I was talking about, this is the trees I had. And I, I thought, I need more. I really wanted to fill in that whole little uh, snowy landscape line. And I even wanted some down near the bottom of the card because I felt like that really rounds it out, rounds it out nicely. So we're just going to start adhering the components we have and I can go back and add more trees as needed. All of the trees in the upper part of the cart are going to be adhered flat to the cart, meaning I'm using some glue tube liquid adhesive to glue these all in place. And then the trees down near the bottom those and the critters on our card are going to be adhered with foam adhesive so that they pop up. I 
I die cut the smoke coming out of the chimney of the log cabin. Again, this is from that Shadow Box Mountain add-on. From the pearlescent vellum, ran it through Xyron Sticker Maker and added it to the chimney of the house. Now for our critters. So for the mice card, I'm going to stamp four of the mice images from Mice on Ice using River Rock ink. What I love is Lawn Fawn has some new ink colors that are lighter than black that work with alcohol ink markers. And this is awesome if you don't want that black bold outline. I'm a huge fan of no line coloring. And while this isn't necessarily no line coloring, it's softer and you don't have that super harsh line. I knew with all of the critters I'm coloring today, that includes the mice, the bear, and the penguin, that gray, and in this case, warm gray mark, Copic markers, were going to be used. And so the River Rock ink was really perfect for this because it's just kind of going to soften the effect. Almost like no line, but still you're going to have a, a, enough of a line for detail and things like that. But I just think it really softens the whole effect and makes it coordinate with our colored die cuts super nice. So we're coloring in our mice with warm gray 0, 0, 1, 4, 6, and 8. Just different combinations of those markers too so that they're not all super dark or all super light. Then the red scarf and skates are is R35 and R39. And you guys probably know this if you've seen any of my other videos, but one of my favorite things to do is to take a white pen or a glitter pen or something and add detail to scarves. So the red scarf is going to have white stripes. The skates, I did feel that even though we're stamping the, our critters with the River Rock ink, the blades of the skates need to stand out. And in order to help those stand out, I did go ahead and trace those with a black marker. For our next mouse, again, we're gonna color in with warm gray markers, and the scarf for her is going to be pink with RV52 and RV55, skates as well. And we're gonna give her some little eyelashes once we have um, her all finished. So cute, and I love how these two look like they can be holding hands. I used this particular image on both cards, that, that second one, the one with the pink scarf. So she'll be on both cards. The next one, I'm going to make, create a blue scarf and skates with B01 and B04. The insides of all the ears are R00, and I'll just go over them lightly with warm gray 01 so that they're not a super harsh pink. And I'm adding some dot detail to my mice for a little bit of added texture. The final my mouse, pardon me, and scarf are going to be YG 21, 25, and 17. Nice little bright green. Purposely picked some different greens for the accessories on this mouse as opposed to the colors I used for the trees, which is G24 and G28. Once we have these cuties all colored, we are going to take the coordinating dies and die cut these for our card design. Using my darkest warm gray 08 for the nose on each of these as well. Warm gray 08 or warm gray eight, pardon me, was only used for the noses on my critters. That's the only place I use that. I actually didn't uh, go dark anywhere else. Warm gray six was the darkest color for any of the mice. And just a fine tip black pen of any kind will work to add in that detail. Uh, draw in a mouth if you want to. I didn't actually do that for many of these. On some I did. It just really kind of depended. And then I've got all my die cuts here, and I'm ready to start putting it together. I'm going to pop them up with foam adhesive for that little bit of dimension. Since we inlaid so much of the background of the card, we are not going to have a super dimensional card or 
it's still going to go in an envelope really easily. So this is a great opportunity to grab our foam adhesive and pop up our cuties so that they really shine. Don't forget to take a black pen. I like a gel pen and I always wait till after I've die cut the images to use that gel pen to add detail to the eyes. I've also taken a fine tip black pen and drawn in some eyelashes as I mentioned a little bit ago for some of my critters. And we'll even finish their noses with a crystal lacquer so that they're nice and shiny and just a tiny bit dimensional. But that's completely optional. You could use glossy accents or anything like that. I'm using just some small foam adhesive squares for these small critters. This really shows how great those stitching dies are from the stitched pond in adding detail for an ice skating themed card. This is a fantastic addition to the Lawn Fawn family. You guys know I'm a huge fan of scene cards and so I just absolutely love this stitched pond. I think it would really be fun too to take the uh, fishing polar bear from the Berry Happy Holidays, which is the same set the bear comes from, and have him fishing in this pond as well. Next, I did add a little stamped heart from Mice on Ice right between the, mi the mice. I stamped that with River Rock and colored it in with R35 and R39. Now I'm just going to play around with placement and I want to go ahead and add more trees. So I definitely need more. I'm going to actually end up adding three more trees up at the top and three trees along the bottom. Anything that I'm going to adhere along the bottom will be adhered with foam adhesive. I'll use a combination of small adhesive. In fact, I think I just used some really thin adhesive strips. You can also cut up square foam adhesive or if you have the big scotch adhesive, you can trim that into thin strips. A pair of tweezers comes in super handy here for placement and not getting your fingers in the glue. We're going to finish off the top of our card first. And you can see what a huge difference that makes from the few trees to a few more. I think it makes all the difference in the world. And here's those thin adhesive strips. I'm just going to pop those, trim it down a little bit and then go ahead and hear the, adhere those in place. There are also some trees in the Shadow Box Mountain add-on if you want uh, are looking for some trees. So simply shop your stash. See what die sets you have. And you could always stamp some trees and color them in in the same way that we did our critters maybe using the River Rock ink or even a lighter ink like Crunchy Leaf, which also works with Copic markers. Now that we have all of our pieces in place, I did stamp an additional sentiment inside my card for this one. I love the May the Little Things Bring You Happiness that I stamped on the front. This really would work for a lot of different occasions, um, winter occasions, but it will work for multiple. And inside, also from Mice on Ice, I stamped Have a Joyful Winter with that fish tank ink. For my second card, here I am simply masking off my sentiment, may your days be berry and bright. It's one long line of text and I felt like it fit better as two lines of text. Instead of cutting my stamp apart, I simply masked off part of the image, stamped be berry and bright first, added my white embossing powder, cleaned my stamp, masked off the part that I'd already stamped, and then stamped may your days and added my white embossing powder to that. This gives you a fantastic stamped and embossed sentiment right on that pearlescent vellum pond. For the coloring of these critters, I have my penguin from the Winter Penguin set. 
my bear from Berry Happy Holidays, and of course, a mouse from Mice on Ice. For the penguin, we are using some dark gray, warm gray colors with warm gray eight and six, as well as four and one and zero for the belly part. The penguin is going to have a blue scarf and blue skates. I'm going to stamp, or pardon me, color the skates with and scarf with B04 and B01 and add some fun design to the scarf with my white pen and make it a polka dotted scarf. The bright scarves and accessories really pop off and make your draw your eye into these adorable little critters. The beak of the penguin was colored with YR04 and YR09. For our bear, I absolutely love this sweet bear and I've used it many times. We're going to color her in with warm gray 4, 1, and 0, 0. Just really light around the edges. Her skates and scarf are going to be colored with R35 and R39. She's going to have a little R00 for her cheeks. And I want to make sure and go in and add in the detail for her nose, mouth, and eyes. Her nose, I will wait till I've die cut and add the gel pen so that it's really shiny. I'll take a fine tip black pen for the eyes and mouth and draw in some eyelashes to give her even more, ca even more character. A little dot detail with my darker warm gray markers that I'm using here will give a little bit of texture to the fur as well. I'll draw in some lines with a white pen on her scarf for the pattern and to finish her off. Then we're going to color in our final mouse with the warm gray markers just like we did on the last card and do another pink scarf and pink skates with RV 52 and 55. Here's that detail for the eyes as well as the little eyelashes. Super, super quick coloring here as far as the mouse goes. And you could even add additional mice to this multiple ice skating critter card if you wanted to. Little R00 for the insides of the ear as well as the cheek. We're going to take the coordinating dies from Winter Penguin, Very Happy Holidays, and Mice on Ice and die cut all three of our critters and then adhere them to our card with foam adhesive just like we did on the previous card. The background was created pretty much exactly the same as far as coloring in the pearlescent vellum, uh, the pond, the sky, stamping and embossing our snowflakes, coloring in the mountain range, adding the trees, and the log cabin. The placement of the sentiment, the sentiments used, and the critters used for each card are really the only difference between the two designs. We'll take our black glaze pen and add that detail into the nose now. Also the eyes on the mouse. And go ahead and make sure that the little lines there on the skating part of the pond are blended out and add a few additional trees just like we did before and stamp some little hearts. I stamped two hearts up above. And then I'm also going to stamp and emboss a heart right below the sentiment along the bottom edge of the card and color that in with Copic markers as well. A little crystal lacquer was added to the beak of the penguin and to the nose of the mouse to finish the card. I hope this has inspired you to try some mixing and matching for your winter and holiday themed scene cards. The supplies I've used to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. 
Here are a couple more cards featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you here next time.